Hello scramblers and climbers. How nice to be back with you again. My name's Elizabeth and I'm really glad that you're watching this video with us today. Now let me see, I've got a camel here today because there's a camel in our story. But before I tell you about that, let's start with our scramblers prayer as we always do. We're going to use the different parts of our body to talk to God. So I'm sure you know this and you can join in. When I touch my head, I think of you, Father God. When I put my hand over my heart, I say that I love you. When I put my hands together, I ask you to come and make everything right. When I point to my mouth, I ask you to give us the food we need. When I bow my head, I say sorry for the wrong things I've done. When I lift my head, I know you forgive me. When I open my arms, I ask you to help me be friends with everyone. Now, nice big amen. Amen. Okay, so since we started back onto the summer, we've been finding out about some of the stories that Jesus told. Well, today we've got a slightly different sort of story. This is a story about something odd that Jesus said to his disciples. One day, a rich young man had come up to Jesus and he wanted to know how he could be one of Jesus' friends. He was a good man and he had lots of money and lots and lots of things. He wanted to know from Jesus how he could please God. I think he already thought that he was pretty pleasing to God. Jesus told him that he must keep all of God's rules and be kind to other people. Jesus said as well that he should sell everything he had and give the money to the people who were poor and then to come and to follow Jesus. But the rich man was very sad. He didn't want to sell his things and to give away his money. And so he just walked sadly away. Jesus then said a very funny thing to his disciples. He said, it's very difficult for rich people to become my friends because they don't want to give up all their money and all their things. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. He said, anyone can be my friend, but it is hard for people who like having lots of things. Now, I've got a needle here and I'm going to show it to you. And I think you can see there. Can you see that? That bit in the middle, that's the eye of the needle. That is the little hole that you'd put the thread through if you were going to use your needle for sewing. Now, if you look at my camel, and this isn't even a full-size camel, this is only a paper camel, okay? You can't, he's not going to get through that little tiny hole, is he? So that's a very funny thing. Anyway, what on earth could Jesus have meant? I'm going to hand over to Alice there now, and he's going to tell us all about camels, and then he's got a story for us. Hello, scramblers and climbers. I'm Alistair. And it's really good to be back with you again. As Elizabeth said, today we're going to be hearing a story about a camel. But first of all, I'd like to show you a nice video. Pause this and click on the link below. I really liked Cameron the camel. Isn't it good that he was rescued and is being looked after? I like the way he kept taking the man's hat. Camels are really interesting animals. We're going to have a quiz and discover more about them. Here's the first question. How many humps does a camel have? Well, some camels have one hump. They're called dromedary camels. Other camels have two humps and they're called Bactrian camels. Here's the next question. Where do you think camels live?
Well, dromedary camels usually live in desert places, sometimes in the Middle East, including where Jesus lived, or in North Africa or Australia. These places are very hot and very dry and, of course, very sandy. Bactrian camels also live where it's dry. But where they live in Mongolia, China, Kazakhstan and Russia can be very hot and very cold. And it's not just sandy. Sometimes they live in rocky and stony places. They're very tough animals. What do you think are some of the special things about camels which help them live in dry, sandy places? Well, first of all, they can eat almost any plant, including dry, prickly or salty ones. If they're hungry, they'll even eat rope or sandals or tents. I wonder if that's why Cameron kept taking the man's hat. Another special thing about camels is that they store energy in their humps. That helps them to last a long time without food or water. They can live for about two weeks without drinking, but when they do find water, then they drink a lot. Camels have ways of managing when the sand is blowing around. They have bushy eyebrows and two layer eyelids to stop the sand getting into their eyes. They can also shut their nostrils. Those are the holes at the ends of their noses. And that stops sand getting in and it also stops water escaping. Here's the last question. How do you think camels can be really helpful to people? Well, one way is by carrying things for them. Because they're very strong and very tough, they can carry heavy loads a long way through hot, dry places. Aren't camels brilliant animals? Now let's hear a story that Jesus told his friends about a camel. I think you'll enjoy it. One day, Jesus was talking to his friends. When he said a really strange thing, he said, It'll be very hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. In fact, it'll be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. So what do you think Jesus meant? Let's see, shall we? Close to where Jesus was talking to his friends, there was a town. And surrounding the town was a really big, tall wall. In the wall was a little gate, and strangely, it had a really funny name. It was called the Eye of a Needle, because it was so little. Anyway, one day a camel arrived at the gate, but this was no ordinary camel. He was a very grand, proud and important camel, with a beautiful gleaming furry coat and a diamond studded noseband. He'd got a fine saddle with expensive red tassels. And he even had his own servant boy to flick the flies away from him. He was loaded high with the finest Persian carpets to sell in the town's market. And as he approached the little gate, he said, Oh, make way, make way, make way, everyone, I'm coming through. But oh no, wait for it, he's not coming through. He can't get through the hole. He's too big. 
try wriggling through backwards, said the boy, as he showed the camel how to do it. Oh, camels never wriggle, said the camel. But I'll try anyway, he added. The camel turned around and tried to push his bottom through the hole in the wall. He heaved and he pushed. <laughs> He even tried a wriggle, but it was no use. He couldn't get through the gate. I know, said the boy, I'll unload you. So he untied the ropes and took off all the fine carpets and his diamond studded noseband. Now try again, said the boy. And the camel heaved and he pushed and he shoved and he heaved and he pushed and he shoved wait 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 shouted the boy your saddle keeps getting stuck you'll have to let me take that off as well so the boy took off the fine saddle and you know what without his fine saddle and expensive red tassels and beautiful persian carpets and his diamond studded noseband the camel didn't look so proud and important any more. You know, he was just an ordinary camel. And this ordinary camel once more tried to get through the gate. He got down on his knees and he shuffled forward bit by bit and bit by bit until finally he was through. Hooray! Hooray! shouted the boy. You're through! You're through! So what did Jesus mean, do you think, when he said, it'll be very hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. In fact, it'd be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. Well, the camel found it very hard to get through the gate called the eye of the needle. So I think that Jesus meant it's not what we do or how important or rich we are or which famous people we know that gets us into heaven. It's only by God's grace and mercy and our faith and trust in Jesus that actually gets us there. Well, what did you think about that? I like Cameron the camel. I thought he was great fun. I had no idea they had camels in Australia. And that camel in the video was fun too, wasn't he? He didn't want to take off all the things that made him feel grand and important. And the rich man who came to see Jesus was a bit like that. He didn't want to give up all of his nice things to help poor people because they made him feel grand and important. The luggage that the camel had on his back they weren't bad things, but they were just getting in his way and stopping him getting through the gate. And the rich man's money wasn't a bad thing in itself. It was just that he wanted to hold on to it when Jesus had asked him to give it away. He thought that holding on to his money was more important than being Jesus' friend and following him. So what about us? We're probably not rich like the man who came to Jesus. But maybe there's other things that we think are more important than loving God and which stop us loving other people in the way God wants us to. We've all got things that we think are very special and they're most likely good things. But none of those good things are more important than being Jesus' friend. God wants us to use the things that we have to help other people and not to keep everything for ourselves. So be having a think about what things you have that God might want you to use to help other people. I'm going to show you how to make a camel with some things on his back and a gate that only the, the camel can only get through if he takes the things off. So you should have a sheet of paper like this with a camel on it and another sheet of paper like this with a gate on it. Now, if you can, get this, this can just be printed on paper, that'd be fine. If you can get the camel printed on thin card, that will be a bit easier, be a bit easier to make him stand up. 
So first of all, I'm going to show you how I made the gate. So here's the gate. If you can see, this is an old cereal box and I've cut the bottom off it and then I have stuck down the side now I've got the, uh, the picture of the gate and I have cut out that middle section. So I've now got a gate that the camel can walk through. Here it goes. Now, if you, this is a, let's put that to one side. This is my camel that I cut out earlier. And this is a strip that's going to make him stand up. So you'll need a little piece of sellotape on either end and if you stick a little bit there fold that round and stick a little bit on the other end under his other feet and then he stands up and you can just fold those bits okay so now we've got a camel who stands up and then you should have a piece like this and you cut some slips in it now on the outside of mine, I've got, ooh, I've got a bag of money here and I've got a big box with something exciting in it. You have to have a think about what that might be. Okay. And you can just slot that on top of the camel. And now, if you get your camel to come up to the gate and to try and go through, oh, you can't get through. If we bring him out, if we tell him to take his pack off his back, put down all the things that he thinks are important, and then we can get through the gate. So have a think about what things might be in your camel's, uh, in your camel's luggage. It might be some money, or it might be your toys, or it might be your time using your time to help somebody else rather than just doing the things that you want to. God wants us to use all the good things that he's given us to help other people. And because Jesus said it wasn't easy, and we don't find it easy, we find it quite difficult sometimes because we want to hold on to our things, I've got a prayer to say at the end. Father God, as we think about the story, we thank you that we don't have to be rich or important or clever or very good all the time to belong to you. We thank you that you love each one of us so much that you sent Jesus to show us the way to be your friends forever. We're sorry that when we love our things more than we love you, help us to change so that we can love our things less and love you and other people more and more. And then there's a nice big amen. Amen. Okay, and there's one more thing I've got here to show you. I don't know if you've played with one of these before. It's a chooser. And I think if you don't know how to play with this, I'm sure your mum or dad will do, because these things have been around for a long time. I used to make things like this when I was a little girl, and that's a long time ago now. So we've got a, we've got a sheet for you here, which we're sending home. And uh, this is the bit at the bottom you've got to cut out. And here's the instructions for how to make it. And I hope you'll have fun playing with that. You've got um, days of the week on there. So you pick a day. Maybe you pick a Sunday. It's Sunday today. And you go S-U-N-D-A-Y. And then you'd look inside and you'd say, ooh, you could choose red or purple or pink or brown. So if I said brown, you'd go B-R-O-W-N. And then let's have a look. We've got blue, green, orange or yellow. So if I pick yellow, what would it say? It says, follow Jesus, pray for your teacher. So that's something that you could do this week to follow Jesus. You could say a prayer for your teacher. Anyway, and we've just got a song for you at the end. And that's all about how much God loves us. I'm 
Christ Church, 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 Christ